my father's place, proclaiming Jesus Christ to the world. Good morning and welcome to my father's place. Today's message is called Liars. And you can go to John 8, starting with verse 41. And I will be going other places too, but you do not need to go there unless you're really adept at zipping around in your Bible. I'd rather have you hear what he wants to say than be busy trying to find something in the scriptures. Because I really want you to hear it. It is so very important today. In these last days, when we see that birth pangs are coming more frequently and more intensely, you see it. You see that persecution of Christians is coming in this country and is already here. And so that is a really good evidence that things are getting closer. We have a few things that need to happen over in Israel first, though. So, the building of the temple. They're ready, but the temple isn't up yet. So, I'll pray, and then I'll ask the Lord to speak through me in that process. Mm, Lord Jesus, if I'm the one speaking, it won't have any power at all. But Lord, when you speak, there is power. When you speak, your words go in and prick hearts. And that's the whole purpose. I am wasting my breath. I am beating the air unless you're the one who's speaking. So speak, O oh Lord, that they may know that you are real and that they may know and be warned of the liars that are throughout today's church worldwide. I pray this in your name. Amen. So I expect those who are part of the world to lie. I expect people who do not know God at all to lie because they have become the children of Satan. I will show it to you in today's scripture. He is the father of lies and there is no truth in him. So if someone just lies, then not just practices, but lies at all, that indicates who their father is. And so I expect that of the world. They have a different God, the God of this world, the prince of the power of the air, Satan. He is their God. They are his children. And they do as their father does. But... Hang on to your hat, because I tell you the truth, there are liars in pulpits. There are liars in boardrooms, in churches. There are liars in denominational headquarters. And for those who are non-denominational, there are liars in their ministry headquarters. So who is their father if they are lying about Jesus Christ? If they have created another Jesus, if they have made a Jesus that's like you, if they have made him human, he worries, he frets, he's depressed, he's confused. Those are lies. But unless you know Jesus Christ intimately, you will never detect them. And you will like what they say because lies often are aimed at your sin nature, which is not yet crucified until you obey Jesus Christ's command to be filled with the Spirit. Then you will readily detect lies. But you cannot until then. I could not. Jeff could not. None of us can. The Holy Spirit teaches us all things. And he's the one, if he's large and in charge in us with the Father and the Son, then we will detect lies and liars in the church. Another Jesus, a counterfeit. But, you know, if you're looking at the real thing, you'll readily identify a counterfeit. So they will argue that they are children of God and lovers of Christ, but they are not at all because they lie. They are children of Satan. So the liars of Jesus Christ's day sought to kill him, and they were successful they convinced Rome to crucify him, but he rose. Can't kill the truth, and you 
can't kill the one who's the way and the truth and the life. He rose. Glory to God. But today's liars in the pulpits will say, oh, God is our father. He is not because they're lying about Jesus. So they kill him, in a sense, with their lies by making him human like us, making him like us, and all the other ways that they pervert and twist who he is in order to please ears of their hearers. Jesus called out the liars of his day, and I will read it from John 8, 41 through 45. There's a lot of truth here, and I'll take it apart for you. He says this to the Jewish leaders, religious leaders, who have come against him and hate him because he calls them out for their lies. And he will do so here. Verse 41, you are doing the deeds of your father. They said to him, we are not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and have come from God. For I have not even come on my own initiative, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I am saying? It is because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. So, I'll take it apart. John 8, 40 through 41. But as it is, you are seeking to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. This Abraham did not do. You are doing the deeds of your father, because they claimed Abraham was their father. They said to him, we were not born of fornication, we have one Father, God. But, you see, Jesus Christ was a threat to the leaders of the day, the religious leaders, because Israel was not a government like we have here. It was led by religious leaders. And he had spoken the truth to them, and he had contradicted their lies. In Matthew 23, he calls them out over and over again for what they are doing because they are making people their followers and making them twice as much a son of hell as they are. They, they called him a bastard. We were not born of fornication because they didn't believe their own scriptures from Isaiah 7, 14, that said a virgin would bear a son. They knew those scriptures, but because he was coming against them, they rejected him as that one who had been prophesied by Isaiah and in many other places in the Old Testament. So the very one God sent to them, they rejected those who supposedly knew God, those who were the leaders, those in whom the people placed their trust. And it's the same today. Many people will go into a church and they'll trust that whatever the pastor is saying is true. But unless that pastor is filled with God, he will speak the lies of the one who is his father, Satan. And he will deceive you because that's what Satan does. And he will lead you down the wide path that leads to destruction. And destruction meaning total, eternal perishing where the worm never dies. You are eternally tortured and the fire never goes out. You are eternally burned. 
But if God was the father of those religious leaders, they would never do such things. If God was the father of those who claim he is in today's church, they would not say what they say. They would not say once saved, always saved, because that is a lie that is not in the scripture. But they do because it makes everyone feel good because they can go ahead and sin and repent and sin and repent and sin and repent. If you're doing that kind of a cycle of sin and repent, you're not really repenting. To repent is to totally turn away from what you're doing and cry out to Jesus Christ to cleanse your heart and crucify your sin nature. But nobody speaks of those things because they are liars and they are the children of Satan who is a liar and the father of lies. If God were their father, they would not have rejected him. The Jews would not have rejected him. If God was the father of those who are preaching lies from pulpits, they would not reject him in favor of one made in their own image. The Jewish leaders would have identified him as God. Instead, they tried to call him a bastard. And they would know that Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies regarding him from the Old Testament. They knew he did, but because he came against them, because he exposed them, because they were telling lies to God's people, they rejected him. And they would know that his words were the truth. They claimed to know the Old Testament inside out and outside in and upside down and right side up, and they could quote, my goodness, I know a lot of people who can memorize scripture and they go home and sin like crazy. It isn't about memorizing scripture. It's about him being in you and his spirit teaching you all things and being his sheep and following his voice and no other. That's what it's about. That's Christianity. So why did they not understand him? Why did they not recognize him, he tells them in verse 43, why do you not understand that is absolutely no by what I am saying, that I am God the Son? It is because you cannot hear, you cannot understand my word. You are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks it from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. He speaks the truth in this word, and yet some people will say, oh, I have to write a book about the hard sayings of Jesus and try to explain away the hard truth that he's getting at in those hard sayings. They aren't hard. If you're filled with the Spirit, you can explain them easily. And you understand them. So they were waiting for their Messiah, but they were waiting for a Messiah who was going to free them from Roman rule. They were waiting for an earthly king to sit on David's throne. They were waiting for the kingdom to be reestablished. Why? Because it would make their lives better. That was the whole idea. They knew it would be better if they had their own king rather than being under Roman rule, but God had judged them, and that is why they were under Roman rule. Remember, they went into captivity in Babylon, and after Babylon was captured, the king of Persia, who, who then was over Babylon, sent them back to the land and they were yet ruled because in came the Roman Empire. And they were under the rule of Persia until that time. So they were not free. They only knew about Jesus Christ. That's why they didn't understand his words. They knew all the scriptures. But they didn't know him. So who was their father? The devil. Can you imagine their response? These pompous Religious ones who thought they knew everything and that who were 
proclaiming that Jesus was just a bastard and liar. They did what the devil wanted them to do. Ultimately, it was God's plan. But he called them out for what they were. He knew he was going to be crucified. He told his disciples that over and over again, and it never sunk in because they didn't understand yet. It was when they were filled with the Spirit that everything came to light because the Holy Spirit showed them the truth. But these, they didn't want to know the truth. They claimed they were holy. They claimed they were gods. But they were not at all. So the liars in today's church are just the same. They try to make God and Christ like us so that we feel better about ourselves. We're commanded to become like him. They turn things around. They want to make him like us so we feel all good. But he commands us to become like him by being filled with his Holy Spirit. It's a commandment. It's not a suggestion. It's not optional. It's essential. Because as I have already said, that is the only way you will be able to judge the fruit of those who are standing in your pulpit. Verse 45, but because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. And I'll go down to this. It's because he speaks the truth that they don't want to believe him. Because his truth conflicts with their narrative. And if you think narratives are just in politics, let me tell you they are in today's church as well. And they do not want to obey all of Jesus Christ's words, just the ones they cherry pick. So, he says, they are of Satan. And I say, those who are doing those things in today's church are of Satan. And I said, Lord, that's pretty harsh. But it's true. If you lie, you are of Satan because he is a liar, the father of lies. Lies are his native language. So be shocked. Be shocked and convicted to the point where you would repent. And cry out for the Lord to fill you with the Holy Spirit so you would no longer lie. Amen. So he who is of God hears and understands the words of God. So when Jesus Christ speaks, they know he's the son of God. But as I've said, because what he is doing conflicts with their narrative, who they want their Messiah to be, and because he is calling them out, because they don't even know God, they want to call him what they are. So, hear Paul's warning to the church at Corinth. 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen. For such men are false apostles. And speaking to today's church, deceitful workers disguising themselves as apostles, that is, leaders of Christ, chosen by him. Verse 14, no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Verse 15, therefore it is not surprising if his servants, if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, but their end will be according to their deeds. Hear Jesus Christ warning to you, oh, you who sit in the pews today, hear his warning. Matthew 7, 15 through 20. Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree 
produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown in the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. But as I have said, if you don't know him intimately, you will not identify the words of the liars whose father is Satan, who are deceiving you. What are their fruits? What are their fruits? What are the fruits of these who he's calling out? Lies. What are the fruits of the false prophets of today? Lies. Today's churchgoer, turn away from false teachers, false prophets, for with their words, they will kill you. How? If you continue on with them, instead of crying out to Jesus to be filled with his spirit so you know the truth, then you will surely go right with them into eternal perishing. That is how they will kill you. You follow their false hoods, you follow their lies, and you will die with them eternally. Therefore, repent and stay and wait as he commands to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you are, you will be his sheep. He says this, John 10, 4, when he puts forth all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know, they know his voice. You will not know his voice until you are filled and then he will be in you and he will speak to you. Until then, you can be deceived. They will know his voice. A stranger, they simply will not follow. Are you following strangers? Are you following those who do not teach according to this word? Do you even look at this word to see if what they are saying is true? A stranger, they simply will not follow, but will flee from him. This is his sheep, because they do not know the voice of strangers. Verse 27 of John 10. My sheep hear my voice. Unless you are following after the truth of this word, you are not his sheep. Any promise that he makes to his sheep in John 10 is not for you until you turn away from the false teachers you're listening to. My sheep hear my voice, and they know me, and I know them, and they follow me. Verse 28, and I give eternal life to them, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. This is where a lot of people get the ones saved, always saved. But he says, no, no, these are the ones who hear my voice and follow me. These are the ones who don't follow strangers, all the false teachers who are out there. The ones whose father is Satan, as he clearly says in John 8. You are not his sheep if you are following liars because you're listening to the voice of strangers. So that promise of eternal life is not yours unless you repent. If you will repent, surely you will hear his voice and you will follow his voice only because he will take out everything in you that rebels against God, everything in you that wants ear-pleasing words. He'll take that all away from you. Glory to God. He will purify your heart. When he and the Father and the Spirit fully and permanently indwell you, you will not in any way be able to be deceived by all the liars that are out there today. You will know the truth, you will live the truth, and you will speak the truth because the truth is in you. Until then, you are not his sheep. But when you are filled, he will speak to you, from you. You will shine with his light. You will be a light in the darkness. You will hold out the word of life to a crooked and perverse generation. That is your purpose here, O oh Christian. It isn't to go to church on Sunday and do all the things that the rest of the world can do. Nice stuff. It's to be his witness here. And you cannot do it when you're listening to liars, because you're not his if you're listening to liars and if you love their lies. 
So turn. Turn away from false teachers. Their words are sending you to hell with them. Lord Jesus, may people hear the consequences of listening to the lies that are just rampant in today's church, Lord. May they hear and repent. In your name I pray it. Amen. The fields are white and the workers are few, but the Lord of the harvest is faithful and true. He'll send forth more workers to accomplish his plan and pour out his spirit.